Hello all, this is John from EastCoastArmory.com and I'm here today with a project update video for this 1-6 scale Armortech radio controlled late production German Tiger 1. Since the last video update, the model's engine compartment has been completed, installed, as well as the rest of the model's hull functions. We'll be going over these additions in this video. First, a quick walk around the engine compartment. and also the hull interior starting with the tanks engine compartment as we can see here all of the details have been added as well as all the animations have also been wired and completed now because the tank is radio controlled and underneath this, these areas here are the torsion bars as well as the rear idlers. Because of the importance of these locations, all of the components that you see here in this compartment are able to be removed. However, as of note, this is only to be done in an extreme emergency. This is not something that you need to do on a regular basis for even for maintenance. Because of modifications that I made to these locations that were discussed in a previous video, the likelihood of there needing to be access to these locations will be quite rare. However, if the need does arise and you do need to get access to these locations here, the engine as well as the fans are held on via fasteners and the other components are held on with small adhesives. As for the fans themselves, they are located directly over the idler mount bases that is discussed earlier. Because of their location, small axis holes are actually cut into the engine compartment lower floor in order to get access to those locations. The fans themselves are actually mounted to the hull via a large panel. That panel is bolted to the tank. By the removal of the fasteners, the entire panel along with the fan and radiator clutch will be removed and just lifted out of the way. A few of my viewers might be wondering, okay, so the engine compartment has all of its detailing, as does half of the fan compartment. However, what about these two locations here? They are left vacant. The reason why they are left vacant is because on the real tank, this portion here and this portion here would be for the tank's two top fuel tanks. The fuel tanks themselves are not visible as there is a sheet metal duct that fits over the fuel tank, which is then connected to the tank's grill work. The grill work will have its sheet metal air, air duct and that will be fabricated by the next update video. So there's more information on that to follow. Moving our way to the tank's engine compartment detailing, we will see that the engine compartment detailing is slightly different from that of the initial production Tiger One that it completed a few years ago. Videos of that build can be found on my video listings. The big difference is that this tank here, being a late production unit, was powered by the Maybach HL230 gas engine, as opposed to the HL210, which was found on the early initial production units. The HL230 t equipped tanks featured a slightly different layout, namely which is that in the fan clutch drives, on the HL210 unit, the clutch drive featured a differential which would have been mounted here in the rear portion of the tank, and then that would have powered the fans. However, on the HL230, that design was changed and featured two smaller gearbox units which would have been mounted to the side of the hull. That would have stepped down the, or drove the power from the engine to power the fans. 
also, if we could notice, a big difference between the initial production and later production units is that all of the snorkeling equipment, which would have been mounted in this location over here, has been dropped. The snorkeling feature was dropped on the Tiger Ones and were no longer found on the mid to late production units. Also, because of the, that feature being dropped, there's a lot less cabling as well as push rod type assemblies that are found on the inside portion of the engine compartment. Another feature that makes this a later production unit is that of the small axis hatch. On, to get access to the fuel primer pump, there's a small little axis hatch on a hinged door. On the initial and early production units, this hatch is much larger and slides left and right with several ovals in order for the crew member to go ahead and get access to this location here. That system was dropped with the single hatch that we have on this vehicle, which s saved a lot on production time. As for the plumbing, that is identical to that on the HL210, and that information is discussed in more detailing in the HL210 engine video, which is found on my video listings. Just like in a previous video, the engine does have its air filters that are removable. Once removed, you get to see more of the detailing of the engine compartment. With the engine installed, it was then time to work on the tank smoke system. For the tank smoke system, I utilized the version that is offered by ArmorTech. The ArmorTech system is very easy to assemble and is also very highly recommended. The advantage about the ArmorTech system is that it plugs directly into their electronics and no modifications or any type of wiring is needed. Now, one modification I did have to make to the smoke system was that was where it gets placed into the vehicle. Normally, the smoke system is placed in the rear aft portion of the tank, right next to the exhaust stacks. However, because this portion of the vehicle is dedicated to that of the engine interior, the smoke system had to have been placed back a little bit further than normal. To run the smoke through into the engine compartment into the smoke stacks, the smoke actually runs through the exhaust stacks which are found on the tank. The two tank exhaust manifolds are actually casted hollow in order to facilitate the smoke running through them and out through the exhaust. Just like on all my other 1-6 scale radio control tanks that feature a smoke system, I went ahead and installed an onboard refueling system. The refueling system that we have here is my usual Habaco top refueler fuel pump. The pump itself is very affordable and is very powerful in order to do the job. This, the fuel pump is patched into the tank circuiting and is only used on demand. The only time the system gets used is when you want to refuel the smoke system. As you can see for the plumbing, the plumbing is actually going to be hidden inside of the fuel fillers which are found on the tank's drill work. More information on that is the following. In addition to the engine compartment, the tank also features remote lighting. The remote lighting is controlled by this device over here. In addition to the lighting, the tank's sound system has also been calibrated. In addition to the sound system, this aftermarket throttle control box has also been added. What this device does is that it patches in the smoke system with that of the sound system. So that when you are revving up and revving down, this device will emit just the right amount of smoke depending on how much throttle is coming out of the speakers. This device itself is very easy to re install, requires no tools, and is extremely highly recommended if you're building one of these ArmorTech vehicles with this system. Moving on to the tank's control panel, as we can see the control panel has evolved quite a bit since the last previous video. Since the last previous video, all of the animation control switches have been added. The switches are as follows. This switch here is for the refueler. This switch here is for the lighting. This switch here is for the fans. And this switch here is for the engine animations. This switch here is the cutoff switch for the smoke. 
In addition to the switches, we also have here a recharge jack for a 7.2 battery. This recharge jack here recharges a 7.2 battery which powers the animations for the engine, namely the flywheel as well as the fan clutches. The rest of the animations are powered by the tank's onboard 24 volt system. The 7.2 battery is hooked up to the battery harness and because of which a recharge jack was needed so that you don't have to constantly open up the tank to remove the battery. Everything that you see here is accessible from the radio operator's hatch which is mounted on the top deck of the tank. I will now test the functions. The vehicle is turned on. That is the refueling pump. This switch here is a main master cutoff for that of the light switch. If you want to operate the vehicle and do not intend to use the lights, you can kill the switch from the source so that if you hit the radio, to toggle on the radio accidentally, you won't be using the lights. Those are the fans as you could hear them operating. And there's the engine animations in action. I will now take you to each of these sections and show them to you in more detail. I have now activated the tail light. Both the headlight and the tail light are connected to the same circuit and are both controlled with the same switch. By hitting the switch, both tail light and headlight are activated simultaneously. Also, since the last video update, you can see that the headlight has been mounted to the vehicle and installed to the homemade bracket. Still to be added to this component here is the dummy power cord that will snake from the top deck and run down the front glass's plate as that's where it enters the tank on the real vehicle. However, because the top deck has to be removable on this model, a dummy conduit will be fashioned in its place. Also, like with all of these cast bronze taillights or headlights, the blackout cap is removable and is fully functional. I will now activate the tank sound system. Like I mentioned before, the, t the sound system is connected to the smoke system, so when the engine startup noise powers on, smoke should emit from the exhaust stacks. Or smoke gets emitted from the smoke system. This is due to that aftermarket drop in smoke system control that I mentioned earlier. Like I mentioned earlier, all of the engine animations are currently wired into the tank and I will now start turning them on. Starting with the cooling fans and the engine animations. There's the flywheel spinning and the fan clutch is turning. Here goes the entire system in operation.
that concludes this project update video for this one six scale radio controlled armor tech leak production tiger one if you like this video stop by and like us on facebook and don't forget to check out eastcoastarmory.com for more one six scale builds as well as one six and one sixteen scale detail components thank you